Hi everyone, I am here with a Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good night. Oh, my mouth is so dry. Forgive me. Alright, tonight we are in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4 to be exact. We'll be going over unity in the body of Christ and living as children of light. Are you all right in there? No. And the devotion tonight is by Isabella Yusiko. And the Bible verse that goes along with her devotion is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11, 12, and 13. And it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. All right, amen. So I'll put that aside for now, and I will go and read you guys all of Ephesians chapter 4, which is very short. All right. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, this is Paul speaking, by the way, Apostle Paul. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ, being the head of the body member. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding, and separated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to, sens to sensuality to as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, 
to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stilling must still no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Amen. Now it's talking about giving the devil. You don't want to give the devil a foothold. Don't go to sleep angry. That's just giving the devil a foothold. And that's all he needs. He just needs that little bit of anger. That little bit of sadness in your life. That little bit of anger. To step his little foot in. To get a foothold. And to make you start thinking bad thoughts. And then get you to believing them. And that's where it starts. Trust me, I've been there. I think we all have. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. The devil's right there waiting. He's right there waiting. He loves it when you're sad or you get mad. He doesn't like it when you're happy. Unless you're happy because something you've done bad. Because you're on his side. He likes that. But if you're on God's side and you're happy because you've done something good, he's not smiling. But if you're a good person and you're a good Christian and you're sad or angry, then he's smiling and thinking he can get a foothold in on you. And a lot of times he does. That's why you've got to have strong, strong faith. Especially in those times that are hard like that. That's when you're going to need God the most. When you think He's not there with you, He is. He's there with you. Say, a child, just believe, just hold on. It's not time. I was watching this show the other day. It kind of makes me think about that. What was that one? I was on Gunsmoke. This family, you know, it was back in the old days, and they were farmers, and, you know, they need rain for their crops. That's how they made money. That's how they made a living, their, their farm. And it was a drought. They hadn't had no rain, so they didn't have no th nothing to sell, so they didn't have no money. They didn't have no crops to sell. So they were, they were losing their house. They were losing everything. So him and his friends robbed the bank to get a bunch of money. And um, the uh, place said that if they returned all the money, that they would get amnesty. They would let them go if they returned all the money. They wouldn't press charges. But they had already spent some. And right after he had robbed the bank, started to rain. The drought was over. If he would have just held out a little bit longer, kept his faith in God, and held out a little bit longer that same day that he robbed that bank and took off on the run, it started to rain. But he gave up. The devil got a hold of him. And they ended up having to sell their farm to pay back the money they spent 
to go with that money to give it back to the place so neither one of them had to go to jail. All right. Let me read the devotion by Isabella Yusiko and see how this affects her life. She says, I was raised in a denomination that discouraged visiting other churches. So finding a faith community when I became a Christian 18 years ago was a quandary. But once I overcame my inhibitions, exploring different denominations became interesting. I even created a spreadsheet to keep track of the churches I'd attended. Some preachers were a little fire and brimstone. Others were scholarly. Others were pragmatic and almost therapeutic. Bible teachers. Some focused on manifest manifestations of the Holy Spirit, while others sternly warned against them. You'll never have this. If you have ten pastors in the same room, they're all going to be different. Some focused on Jesus, love, and our service to others. Some shared themes of prosperity, others sacrifice. My survey of churches was initially confusing, and I felt like I had to choose sides. Today I listen to an array of Bible teachers praying for discernment and looking for the core beliefs that unify our faith. I now know that no single preacher or denomination can capture the fullness of Jesus and that everyone is likely to get something wrong some of the time. While I guard my mind against wayward teaching, I prayfully enjoy the benefit from diverse Christian messengers, knowing each is anointed with a particular gift but unified in Christ. My spirit, spiritual life is richer as a result. Isabella Yusiko. That reminds me of a um, question. Talked to mom about years ago, years ago, years ago, when I was a kid. Yeah, when I came when I was a kid. Mom said, two different pastors, you'd ask, um, in the Bible, it's, you know, when you die, does it mean you go to heaven right away when you die? Or are you in the grave asleep and you don't go to heaven until Jesus comes back? And you had two pastors and one told her, you go to heaven right away. And the other one said, you don't go to heaven until Jesus comes back and the dead rise. So... You know, it's always confusing because every pastor is going to tell you something different. They're never going to be the same. And that's why it's really confusing to a lot of people. Because a lot of, it's a lot of, mostly the pastor's own opinions is what it is. The pastor's own opinions of what the Bible means. That's what, what they're doing. It's their own opinions of what the Bible means and what it says to them. That's why their answers are always different. And that's just a fact. All right. And the homework for tonight is, this week, listen to a podcast or read a book by a respected preacher who is outside your normal circle. Listen for Jesus and reflect on what you learn. All right. I'll recommend somebody for you guys. You can find him on Bible Gateway or... Go to dailyaudiobible.com. You can go to Facebook, YouTube, anywhere and find him. His name is Brian Harden. Brian Harden. And he's got his wife's name's Jill Harden. He's very, very good. Very good. Daily Audio Bible. He's a pastor, and he's very, very good. I love him. So I highly recommend you go listen to him. Okay, so I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible study. Bye, guys. Good night.